Hi everyone, it's Miss Terry, and I'm here today to talk about my selections for March for students in grades seven through eight. We'll do some fiction, we'll do some graphic novels, and we'll do some nonfiction, and hopefully, hopefully you can find something that you'd be interested in reading. So this first story I'm gonna talk about is called Sky Watchers. It's actually a, kind of a historical fiction, historical sci-fi, I would say. Um, it takes place in 1915, 1952 in Monterey, California, um, right during the Cold War. And there were youngsters who were part of Sky Watcher groups where they would watch for Russian planes that they were sure were going to come to the United States and bomb us. Um, so this group of teenagers is looking for um, these planes when they see some strange lights go off into the woods and four of them decide to follow it to see what happens and they don't return at least not right away and then they start coming back one at a time with no memory of what has happened all except one of them who does not return at all and the other members of the sky watchers group have decided that they're going to try to help them reclaim their memories and figure out what happened that night in the woods a little bit on the creepy sky side this one is called sky watchers Another kind of creepy story, this one is called The Sisters of Stray Garden Place. And this is about three sisters, Mayhap, Winnow, and Pavanine. And they have been staying inside, kind of almost like a sentient house that takes care of them, all of their needs since their parents had disappeared seven years ago. Now their parents had a couple rules for them. Do not leave the house. Do not go into the grass that surrounds the grounds wait for us and sleep darkly. Now the sisters have been following these rules very strictly. Um, they have these things called, I'm gonna have to uh, look it up, droom, droom huns that sink into their their minds at night to help them sleep. Um, but one day, Winnow, the youngest, ends up going off into the grass, which is always kind of whispering to the girls and trying to get inside the house. And she comes back afflicted with a strange disease. And the oldest um, sister, Mayhap, decides that she's gonna have to try to figure out what is going on, how their house is so magical, what maybe happened to their parents in order to save her sister. Again, this is definitely on the creepy side. Doesn't really look it from the cover, but it is. This next one is called The King of Jam Sandwiches by Eric Walters, and this is about a boy named Robbie. And Robbie lives with his dad. His mom had passed away, and his dad's behavior is, is very erratic. Um, some days he'll be extremely depressed. Other days he'll be kind of in just going off the rails. Robbie never really knows what to expect from him. Sometimes his dad will leave him for days at a time. He doesn't really work um, very often, so they don't have a lot of money. Um, it's called The King of Jam Sandwiches because jam sandwiches is pretty much what Robbie lives lives on um, and is always trying to figure out ways to stretch money so that he has enough to eat. Um, and he, but he's doing really well. He's he's very smart. He actually sk skipped a grade. He's a star on the, ba the basketball team. He's able to get a part-time job. And then he gets paired up with a girl, a new girl at school named Harmony. And Harmony's life is also very difficult. She's currently living in a foster home because her mom suffers from addiction. Um, and Robbie and Harmony kind of get this truce of a friendship together. At first, Harmony wants nothing to do with him, but Robbie kind of gets under her her defenses, and they um, become friends. And Robbie often has to save Harmony from kind of the destructive behaviors that she has a tendency to, to choose um, as she tries to deal with the hardships of her life. This is called The King of Jam Sandwiches. This next one is a novel that's written in verse. By verse, I mean poetry, and it's called Before the Ever Ask After by Jacqueline Woodson, and this is about a boy named ZJ, and ZJ um, lives with his family, and his dad was an NFL player, actually a really big star, um, a fantastic athlete, but he is suffering a lot of consequences from the number of concussions that he had received while he was a pro athlete. It causes headaches, it causes a lot of mood swings, and this is the story of how ZJ kind of navigates the man that used to be his father to the man that his father has now become because of these complications. So if you're if you're an NF, if you're an NFL star, you would probably enjoy this. If you like nice quick reads about families um, that are kind of struggling a little bit, you'll enjoy this. I um, mean, this is really just a, a great story about a young man who's trying to um, trying to figure things out. So that is before the ever after. 
this next one is definitely um, a little bit on the silly side, but at the same time um, has all that good magic and fantasy. It's called A Wizard's Guide to Defensive Baking. And this is about 14 year old Mona. And Mona's not like the other wizards who kind of defend the city from, from evil. She only has a little bit of magic and it's all involved with bakery. The only thing that ever really listens to her is the bread in her bakery. And one day she returns to find somebody dead in her bakery and she realizes that, that there is an assassin loose in her town that is trying to um, kill magicians and Mona is next on his list. So now she must try to figure out what is going on before she becomes the next victim. A little bit on the silly side, kind of a fun story. This next one is called Magic, Dark, and Strange. And this one is about a girl named Catherine, and she actually has the ability to raise the dead for a short period of time so that their loved ones can say goodbye to them or ask them questions. She actually works in the obituary printing shop, and her boss knows that she has this magic and often will send her out um, on errands in order to do this. And one night, he sends her to a grave to wake up the young man who has died because he believes that a magical timepiece was buried with him. So Catherine, a little freaked about going by herself, ends up inviting a, one of her friends named Guy, who is actually a watchmaker and has a little bit of magic on his own, to come with her. And when they wake this young man, the magical timepiece is not there. And this young man doesn't even really understand what happened to him, how he died. But it, it's pretty obvious from the wounds on his body that he was probably murdered. When she returns to her boss, he accuses her of stealing the timepiece. Time piece, and now um, Catherine, um, Owen, the young man they raised, up and Guy are on the run as they try to figure out what this timepiece is and make sure it doesn't fall into the wrong hands. So that's magic, dark, and strange. <clears throat> This next one is a fractured fairy tale. It's called Poisoned by Jennifer Donnelly. If you love fractured fairy tales, I highly recommend this author as she's written quite a few different ones. But this one, um, as you can tell from the cover, is a retelling of the Snow White story. And it's about a girl, a princess named Sophie, who is very kind. And the, her stepmother is convinced that kindness equals weakness. And when something slips into the stepmother's mirrors and convinces her to take out Sophie's heart, she follows through and she has her huntsman leave Lead her into the wood and cuts out her heart. Luckily, there were seven woodsmen in the forest at the time, heard Sophie scream, and they arrived in time in order to make her a new heart in order to keep her alive. Now they're trying to keep her protected in the woods, but Sophie is determined to go back and claim what is rightfully hers. So that's called poisoned. This next one is called Hardwired, and this is about Quinn. He's 15 years old, and he his life drastically changes when he discovers that he actually is the first fully self-aware artificial intelligence. And all of these years of life that he remembers actually transpired over 45 minutes. His dad is actually the scientist who created him, and all of his so-called friends are actually grad students who were studying him in this virtual reality world in which he has existed. Well, now he's been pulled back into the real world, and the only person who seems to understand him is um, a 17-year-old named Shay, who was actually a friend of his in the virtual reality world, and she realizes that the experimentation that they have been doing on him is wrong and the two of them set out to try to right the wrongs that have been done to him. It's called Hardwired. Anna on the Edge is a story about a girl named Anna Marie who is the reigning U.S. juvenile skating champ um, and she's not really a girly girl. Um, she's not really into frills and all that. She really is just all about the sport and skating. And then when she discovers that next year's theme for the skating world is princess theme, she's not she's not thrilled with that. And then she meets Hayden, who is a transgender um, boy who accidentally mistakes Anna for a boy, and she decides not to correct him. Um, and this is the story of her trying to figure out who exactly she is. She's trying to kind of play these two different identities. And as they get closer and closer to competition, Anna is going to have to make a decision on who she wants to be and who she wants to show to the world. If you like sports, you'll enjoy this. If you also like stories about personal identity, you would enjoy this. And another sports story that I have today is called Strike Zone by Mike Lupica. He's written a lot of really great um, sports stories, and this one goes back to the baseball field, and it's a story about Nick, who is really hoping to be named his team's uh, most valuable player so that he can throw out the first pitch at a Yankee game and possibly meet his idol, Arroyo, who's another major league baseball team um, player from his hometown. So he's really hoping to meet him. Um, unfortunately, he has a lot of troubles off the field. So even though things are going well there, things 
at home are not so great. His parents are both immigrants. They are undocumented. And unfortunately, his dad has um, a small police incident that is on his record. And Nick is very worried when ICE um, is starting to round up immigrants to deport them. And he's very concerned that his family is going to be targeted. So it's called Strike Zone. So if you like stories that involve a lot of sports but also have a really good side story on top of that, you will enjoy Mike Lupica. So those are the fiction stories. Let's look at some of the graphic novels. Um, this first one is called The Plain Janes. And this is actually um, three different stories of the Plain Janes. Plain Janes, Janes in Love, and then a third one that we haven't seen before called Janes Attack Back. And this is about three girls who share the same name. Um, one is an artist, one is an athlete, and one is a thespian. And they um, kind of, they're friends, even though they're very, very different. And they often go out into their community and uh, decorate. <laughs> I don't know if I would call it decorating, um, but kind of um, vandalize through art and poetry and things like that um, as they're trying to find their place in the world. So it's called Plain James. This next one, Base Battle Lunchtime, is also a compilation. It's four issues of this um, graphic novel. And it's about a girl named Peony who is a really great baker. And she has just agreed to be, um, be on a, a cooking show, a, a TV reality cooking show, but it actually takes place in space. And she discovers that some of her alien competitors are not very nice at all. And she has to decide whether she has what it takes to win this um, game show. This next one is called Operatic, and this is about a girl named Charlie. And Charlie and her friends are in um, high school, I'm sorry, in middle school, and they're, she's very into music, and their music teacher, Mr. K, has challenged them to pick one song that defines who they are. And so this is the story of Charlie trying to figure out exactly who that is. Um, also, as she's trying to navigate friendships, and of course, her crush, who she um, is really hoping um, will become more than just a crush. That's called operatic. I have two different superhero graphic novels. This first one is called Shadow of the Bat Girl, and this is about a girl named Cassandra Kane, who has been raised her entire life by supervillains to be the ultimate weapon. She doesn't really speak very much. Um, all she's been trained to do is to kill her father's enemies. And then one day when she does do that, she the her victim is like, just please tell my daughter how much I love love her. And this kind of throws Cassandra off. She's like, I, maybe, I, maybe I don't have to be this way. I don't really enjoy this life. And so she ends up hiding out at the Gotham City Library, of course, the coolest place ever. Um, and um, she g unveils the story of the Batgirl and she actually hears it from the original Batgirl. And now she's thinking that maybe she can, she can do things for good instead of for evil and if she can change her fate. So that's Shadow of the Batgirl. And then the other one is um, Wonder Twins Activate. And this is about Jaina and Zan, who are twins. Um, and Jaina has the ability to transform herself into any type of animal. And Zayn um, can change into any type of water. Um, they've been exiled from their home planet. And now they're living on Earth under the watchful eyes of Superman as they're trying to navigate what it's like to go to high school. Can you imagine if you had all those superpowers and you had to try to deal with day-to-day -day, um, world of high school with um, bullies and all the things that come along with it? So that's Wonder Twins Activate. This next one is called The Dark Matter of Mona Star. And Mona suffers from um, depression and anxiety and she really struggles a lot and she kind of has that voice inside her always that tells her she's not good enough and that she's not going to be able to do the things that she wants in life. And she's named this um, inner voice her matter. Um, and sometimes they can get very, very dark, but with the help of her friends and her therapist, um, she tries to figure out ways that she can navigate some of her mental health issues in order to have a happy and full life. And then this last one is a good old fashioned ghost story. This is called Surfside Girls. This is the first in a series. This one is The Secret of Danger Point. And the wealthy owner of Danger Point has passed away. And the girls, Samantha and Jade, have kind of been exploring um, the ground since nobody's kind of watching it. And they discover that there are ghosts living there. And the ghosts have asked the girls, can you please try to save our refuge so that it doesn't get destroyed by a developer who is interested in putting up some hotels and things like that. So if you like mystery stories, if you like stories of ghosts that are on the friendly side, then you will enjoy Surfside Girls.
So those are some of the graphic novels. Now let's talk a little bit about some nonfiction. This first one is called Chalk on the Wild Side. Spring is coming. We have lots of great pavement that needs some decorating. And this one gives you some different ideas and how to best do that, including things like making your own chalk or making chalk paint. Um, if you have really enjoyed last spring, getting to decorate your sidewalks, then it might be some time for a little bit of refreshing and this book will give you some great ideas. This next one is really just a feast for your eyes. It's called Beautiful Lego Wild. And these are incredible natural creations using Legos. Um, on the cover, you can see it, it was the parrot, but it has a whole bunch of different creatures and animals. Um, it talks about how each of the creations were made, um, how many pieces, um, it even has, you know, some of the Disney characters. Um, but if you just really love Legos and the amazing things that people can do with them, you will enjoy looking through beautiful Lego wild. This next one is actually another graphic novel, but it's also nonfiction. This is Becoming RBG. I'm sure you've heard a lot about her. She recently passed away. Um, but this talks about what it was like being RBG and it starts from when she was very young all the way up until when she sat on as a Supreme Court Justice. Um, so if you are looking for an inspirational story about girl power, um, you definitely would enjoy this story. Again, it's written in graphic novel format. This next one is um, called Surprising Spies and it's Unexpected Heroes of World War II. So this talks about only a few of them, not all of them, but some of the people who really put themselves out there in order to try to, to defeat Hitler and the Nazis. Um, there's a magician, there's a safe cracker, there's a, a major league baseball player, and all of the things that they were doing in order to pass information back to the Allies in the hopes of defeating Germany. So if you like spy stories, you'll, you'll definitely enjoy this. And it's not super thick, which is always sometimes nice for nonfiction. <laughs> This one is another mili this one is a military story called Courage Under Fire and these are true stories of bravery from the US Army, Navy, Air Force and Marines. So these are actual stories that have happened by soldiers, told by soldiers from all of the different branches of the military. This next one um, is called um, Esports and the New Gaming Culture. And I thought I'd pull this one out, especially since three of our high school students have just received some pretty major scholarship money um, for becoming eSport gamers. Um, and this talks a, a lot about the sport, what kind of things that you could expect if you're interested in getting involved in it. Um, there's a Quite frankly, there's a lot of money into it, um, but it talks about some of the big names in the business, what kind of deals that they're making, um, how, and just how gaming culture has changed so much now that we have this world where people like to watch people who do video games and what that can mean for big business. And then the last nonfiction I have for you today is called Folding Tech, Using Origami and Nature to Revolutionize Technology. So this is actually a book about how they use origami and technology together to create robots um, and other devices that help human beings. So it's really a fascinating look. Um, you can see there's the ladybug. Um, and, and how they look at nature to develop some of this new technology. So if you're looking for a super teeny tiny drone that can sneak into the littlest spaces, how can we make that using technology and how can we make it mimic what a ladybug can do? So it has a whole bunch of different stories like that. So that's called Folding Tech. Enjoy.